Hi, this is Colin Clark, editor of Breaking Defense. We're here uh, talking about the Army's newest vehicle, a fuel cell vehicle they uh, did with General Motors. We're here with Charlie Freeze, the uh, fuel cell guy at General Motors. And you're going to show us how you fuel this new vehicle. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's actually it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, this is a nozzle, a typical nozzle that we use for hydrogen refueling. And so it, it plugs onto the vehicle, you pull this up, and then once it's locked in, there's a communication that happens between the vehicle and the pump right here. And after about three minutes, you fully fuel the vehicle and you get 300 to 400 miles of range. So it off you just got down. hydrogen in the tank yep. and you pump it in. Yeah, so it's pumped in. So this is a, a cutaway of one of the tanks. So it's got a plastic liner on the inside, and uh, that seals in the hydrogen. Right. This is carbon fiber on the outside, so the carbon fiber adds strength to the tank. We actually test this in a variety of ways. One of the ways is we fire a 50 caliber projectile at it, which it will bounce off. Um, if wow. you want to actually try to, this cutaway itself, it went through 38 sawzall blades just to cut this thing out. So it's very, very robust, even though we're storing 10,000 psi hydrogen inside the tank. 10,000 psi, 10, psi, and you can hit it with a 50 cal. Yes, it's actually stronger when it's under pressure. Right. So, um, because it actually relieves some of the hoop stress in the system. So, our system is strongest when it's under those conditions because we're adding to the strength through the inside with the pressure, and you have very little chemical energy because it, the vehicle is more than twice as efficient as an internal combustion engine. So, we don't need much. You're, you're hauling, you know, a couple uh, five-gallon gasoline cans equivalent chemical energy. Wow. And then, if you ever had a system where you were, let's say, in a burning building with the vehicle or something like that, and you wanted to relieve the pressure. We have a way to do that with this on tank valve. So we can we can vent the hydrogen even in a combustion situation and it's basically like having a pilot on a furnace. Now let's say you're out in the desert mm -hmm. and it's 150 degrees in the sun. Yes. How does the hydrogen react? Yeah, it's it's designed so that we can run in a wide range of ambient conditions. All the so way this, down to the minus standard 40. army, forty below to hundred and twenty yes. or whatever. Yes. Okay. Um, so take us around to the vehicle and sure. show us what's cool and why. All right. Yeah, so this is the business end. Um, this, is, this is the stack the, the, and the balance of plant that makes the fuel cell system work. And so what we have here is a system, it's a stack of plates, which we can add more plates if we want more power, take plates away if you want less power. So it's, very, it's a very flexible design. We can, we can apply it to a range of vehicles. So is, is this, uh, for, for people who are looking at it, maybe kind of hard to tell, is this is not a lithium battery system? No, no. Th now there is a battery in the vehicle, but we use that to capture the braking energy because if you're going down a mountain, you don't want to give all that energy away. Right. But this is providing the power for traction. And okay. so by bringing the hydrogen up, we flow the hydrogen on one side. We have a compressor that moves air through the stack, which has oxygen. Oxygen sits on one side of a cell, hydrogen on the other side, right. and, and that causes a catalytic reaction to happen, which the direct output from that is electricity and water. So the only things that we make are water, a little bit of heat, and electricity. And that's, that's one of the big advantages. So of the this. vehicle has an incredibly low IR signature. It will, be, it will be improved by not rejecting much heat. And the right. heat that you do reject isn't coming out of a tailpipe. We don't have a hot tailpipe. We have some low-grade heat that we take through a radiator system. Uh, but that's, that's, a, that's actually a big advantage, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of heat to dissipate. But we also are making about two gallons of water an hour. And have you uh, looked at ways to capture it for troops to use as they travel? Well, that's something we'd look at next. Right now, okay. this vehicle is a demonstration vehicle because what we want to evaluate is the advantages of a fuel cell technology in a very capable off-road vehicle and then put that into the military environment and then we'll do the testing to see how it does. Okay. This vehicle uses the, the, the low end torque capability that comes out of an electric drive, which is a big advantage. We couple that with these 37 inch tires and, and the way the vehicle's been set up with a very aggressive uh, suspension system, very aggressive approach and departure angles, um, and then a, a, a high ground clearance. Is the suspension system for this vehicle new to it as well? We've, for this vehicle, we've used technologies that GM had in-house. So we're, we're taking okay. our fuel cell technology, our Colorado that you can see here. We actually, uh, this vehicle is sitting just between two wheelbases that are that are typical for the Colorado, long and short wheelbase. Um, so, and we've used 
basically deep in, digging into our parts bins, we've been able to take out the different things that you see here. So, uh, for instance, the cooling system on this vehicle is is a combination of Corvette and Camaro cooling systems. So, ah. it's uh, it, because they're very capable cooling systems, and because this doesn't reject much heat, it's very easy to do. So, one of the things that has struck me talking to the folks here about this is traditionally the Army for most vehicles is at least three to five years from idea to having something that rolls. Mm -hmm. How did you guys get this built in nine, 10 months? It's about, yeah, just under 10 months. Uh, so what, what happened was, I mean, GM has been working with the Army for years. Right. Um, and, and on fuel cell technology, we have some cooperative research agreements and other things in place. We share uh, assets in our in our laboratory with the, the laboratory that Tardek has. And the has. Tardek guys are up near you in Michigan. Yeah, it's about a 10 minute walk from our vehicle right. development. It's about 20 minutes from uh, drive from my fuel cell lab in Pontiac. So it's very, very convenient that way. Um, but so we've been working. They've been they've been evaluating these these non-tactical applications of our vehicles all around the world in in Hawaii and different part different bases in the U.S. on the continental U.S. And what we've been trying to do is kind of get them familiar with the technology, get some training on how to use it, how to support it from an infrastructure standpoint. But this is taking some technologies that GM was interested in and we were looking at because we wanted to, for our own purposes, see how these off-road technologies and the, and the fuel cell technologies could be melded together. Do you see this growing into a commercial vehicle? Well, this is a demonstrator. We can watch and see how this thing, how this thing performs and we can make those decisions. But uh, you know, this, this was something where GM was interested in looking at this. Um, that when we talked to our partners just as part of our normal business, they were very interested in it and they said, well, we're really going to need to watch it and see how it works in the hands of the soldiers. So this demonstrator gives us the, the uh, very rapid way of putting together the, uh, the ability to put all the technologies into one, one vehicle and let them test it. So I understand uh, you got it done about two weeks ago. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Um, what, as, as you dealt with the Army, did they do things differently than you had traditionally seen them behave? Well, so what this vehicle is using is is our civilian developed technology. Mm -hmm. So you know, we didn't have to go in. So this you is bounced not, right over all the traditional army development. Well, this stuff. is this is basically using the way we we work quickly and uh, leveraging investments that we've already made. And they were interested in the very same things that we were developing for our own purposes. So you know, we didn't go have to go out and create something that was completely different than the direction we were already heading. Okay. So this gives them the ability to rapidly take advantage of that, leverage it, and go faster. Um, and then based on what they see here, then they can decide if this goes directly on the mark or if they need modifications to meet what their, their uh, application demands. Now, I think I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask anyway. How much did it cost? Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> it's a it's a demonstrator. They always cost a little bit more. Right. But uh, um, you know, the the good thing about fuel cell technology is that it, as part of our overall investment in electrification, we have a glide path to bring the cost down. So this is actually one of the older generation systems. We've got over 3.1 million miles of experience on this fuel cell system um, in real world customer applications, not in the laboratory. And I understand over there you've got the the next generation, which is like half the size. Half the size, half the mass, and that's an antique actually. The one that we're we're working on now is even maybe about 80 percent that size and even less cost to it because we went from a system that had the precious metal that makes the catalytic reaction had 80 grams in the first one we went to about 27 grams in the next one now we're testing in the 12 or less so we've been down that pathway for quite some time now and and so this vehicle is is a great place to watch how those technologies come together and we can upgrade it at any point with the the newer systems so the if if the army decides to go ahead with sort of the next version of this they could end up with a much, much smaller power plant here oh, absolutely. that provides more power. Much lighter, much smaller, exactly. And and what this system is also doing, you can't you can't quite see it from this end. If we go to the back, you can see it. But we use this also to create electricity that we can export for off-vehicle purposes. Why don't we have a quick peek? All right. So tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, so so it, it looks like a nice stereo component, but what this is, is this is the conditioning unit that takes the onboard generated electricity from the fuel cell, and it conditions it to get it into either 120 volts or 240 volts for off-vehicle purposes. So for an ordinary human being, this is basically like a big converter. It's a converter. And so with this system, we can then go in and take the power that's already available, and you can use it to power communication systems, 
uh, for, for a civilian application, we're very interested in this because if you were camping, you basically have a 25 kilowatt generator sitting right there on the vehicle, and it's, it operates silently. So that's a, that's a great advantage. If mm. I'm camping, I don't want to listen to generators, right? So this is a system that operates silently. But for the military, it's also something that you can use to power a field hospital. I mean, this will power a subdivision. If you had this in your driveway It'll and you power lost power, a laser. It power a lot of things. 15 to 20 kilowatts. A lot of things. 50 kilowatts peak. So, you know, we, wow. we can actually peak at a little bit higher than that. Continuous is about 25 kilowatts. Okay. And so that's one of the things that's so interesting about the technology is the things that maybe as, as a civilian application we almost take for granted are actually very valuable for the military applications. Interesting. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.